Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video we're going to be continuing with model scripting and we're also going to be adding touch events to this as well. So let me go ahead and show you what this is going to look like. So what we have is we have a part that the player can touch. When the player touches it there's a model set up in the middle. Right now I have its transparency to 1 so it doesn't show up. When the player touches this part then it loops through all the parts in this model here and makes them appear. Okay let's go ahead and dive in and get started. So let me go ahead and show you the setup we have to do before we can start doing the scripting. So we're going to be adding some parts into the game here. The first one is going to be what I call the trigger pad. So this is the one the player is going to touch to make all these different parts appear. So for this one the size doesn't really matter. What I did is I took this part and I renamed it to pad. But you can name it whatever you want to. Just remember when we're doing the coding you have to change that part in the code. For this part right here what I did is I started with one part that I stretched out into a square. And then once I had it to the right size, then I use control D to duplicate it. And I have four going across this way and three going up. After I had all my parts set where I wanted them to be, I used a selection box to highlight them all. And down under the properties menu, what you have to do is find transparency. And you want to set that equal to one so that they disappear. Another thing you're going to have to do with these parts is go ahead and select them again. And you want to add a model into your workspace. So once you do that, you just want to move those parts into the model. As you can see, I have a script for this model as well, so go ahead and add a script onto your model. As far as the scripting goes for it, it's very similar to what we've done in the prior video. So let me go ahead and just go through this really quickly. So the first part is a variable for the model itself. So this is a reference for the model. The second one is a variable for the pad. And the part I'm talking about is this one right here. So remember if you named it something different, you would have to change that right here. So we're going to take a look at this inside part first. So this is a for loop, which is almost exactly the same for loop as we used in a prior video. So basically what it's doing, it's using that for loop to go through each item in this model. It's going to be checking to see whether that item is a part or not. If it is a part, then it's going to be changing its transparency equal to zero, which will make the part visible again. What's different about this video is we put this inside of a function. And this should look familiar from our touch event videos. So the basic format for a touch event, we're going to have a function. And also this line right here, which connects the part that is being touched with the function. So that's all you have to do for the scripting part of it. So let's go ahead and run our code and take another look at this. Okay, so like I mentioned before, this first one is our trigger pad. So this is what's going to trigger that touch event. When the player touches this pad, then it's going to go into that function, which we have the for loop set up for. So once it touches, it's going into this function, which we called visible. And it's going to run this for loop here. So what that for loop does is for each part in that invisible model right now, it's going to change its transparency equal to zero, which will make that part appear. So let's go ahead and take a look. So if I touch this part, then all the parts in the middle appear. So something like this might be used for, for an obby. It might be kind of cool to have players walk up to this part and be like, how am I going to get to the other side? And as soon as they touch this part, the other ones appear and they're like, oh, okay, so now I know how to get across. So just to recap, what we did in this video is we combined touch events and for loops to get this cool effect that when I touch a part, a lot of other parts appear. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.